How's it going to you boys? It is week seven and we finally get to come home for a game here against uh, Virginia Tech and the Hokies are three and one. They're only a B plus team, so that's very useful. Um, and their wins aren't the most impressive. I mean, they did beat Ohio State, so they've got that going for them, but they did just lose to Wake Forest and then their other two wins are a very bad uh, ECU and a very bad Louisiana Tech. So I think that we might have a decent chance in this game. Uh, they're three and one though, so definitely a lot of momentum on their side. Uh, what happened recruiting? I think we got locked out by the quarterback that we want, uh, Michael May. And so we're definitely going to be, I think, unlocking ourselves, but I'm not sure how useful it's gonna be. Purdue had their visit this week, so that's what gets us locked out. We might as well use our lock break uh, we, it's the first time we've done it. Apparently we get a, a trophy for that. That's cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and give him the points and hope that we can just hold on. If we can get to the off season, we stand a chance, uh, at picking up again, just an incredible athlete and hopefully our quarterback in the future. But, uh, you know, if we can't make it that far, then it was worth a try. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and take points away from uh, a bunch of our, uh, you know, high up players on the board that we have big leads with. Uh, we'll still give them a little bit. <laughs> just to, to, you know, say that we're still giving them points. But for the most part, these guys don't need them. The only reason for us really to give these guys the points is just so that we can get them to commit sooner. Um, you know, some of these guys not very locked. But uh, as things move, that's something that we'll take care of. Week 7 visit for Mark Washington. That's this week. We expect him to commit, so I'm going to take his points away. Same thing with Eric Perkins. Uh, I mean, just uh, all around, it, this should be pretty solid. And Rashad Howard is pretty locked. We have the visit, so we're going to actually up his points. Um, but then we're going to go down to the bottom of the board, and we have a 1,000 points to do what we normally do. A uh, couple guys did leave. We lost a, a fullback, and now it's kind of a spot where, you know, what do we decide on giving points to Brian Terry, that's wide receiver, is one of those guys who uh, hasn't been offered a scholarship by anybody. So we're 4,000 points behind. 71 overall receiver is pretty solid, so I'm going to give him uh, points, and we're going to give him a scholarship offer as well, just to see maybe if we can steal him away. Um, Brian Moore is just about luck. There's not even a point in keeping him on the board, so... Uh, I'm actually going to go through and take a couple of guys like that off this board, and then we will uh, we'll fill it back up and do some scouting down the week. All right, so we found enough guys to fill the board back up. Linebacker, guard, D-tackle, and a wide receiver. I don't necessarily expect these two guys to be great, but I think we have a decent chance to pick them up. And you know what? Actually, 75 is pretty dang good. How about Tom Lane, the guard? A gem up 7 overall to 73. That's very useful. 82 run blocking is fantastic. Derek Gilmore, this defensive tackles only 65 overall. But again, I think that we have a decent chance. And Derek Jin or Gin, I'm probably going to go with Jin. Maybe I just remove an N from his, his last name if we do get him. He's 63 overall. He's not great, but look at that speed. Oh, his acceleration is kind of scary. 97 speed, but only 76 acceleration. So the type of guy where, you know, he does go up five overall, which is nice, but the type of guy where maybe uh, we look for him trying to just bomb the ball downfield. He's certainly not going to beat anybody off the line, but if he gets a chance to pick up a head of steam, he could be wide open. Now we've got three guys ready to visit this week, and we're going to bring them all, I think. Um, competitive visit here isn't great, but there is a complimentary to kind of even it out. Todd Parks at D tackle is going to come. Um, and Greg Jones, this wide receiver. Uh, yeah, he's going to show up this week as well. So now with the remainder of our points, we're going to go through and just go by percent locked and then give points to guys that we are trailing with. Uh, just to make sure that we have a chance to catch up. We'll offer Courtney Hurd a scholarship. I know this guy is a long shot, 3,000 behind. But, uh, oh, maybe that was a waste of points. 83% <laughs> locked. Oh, that was, yeah, that was a waste of 50 points. Uh, that's fine, because we have Greg Jones, and Greg can, well, he's already got his scholarship offer, so we can't do anything there. Uh, can't give anything to Steve. Will Phillips is 81% locked, but we have such a massive lead. 
Uh, here we go. Mark Wilson, middle linebacker. We're a little ways behind, so we'll give him an extra 150 points in a scholarship, and that'll that'll work for this week. Hopefully, we get some commits uh, with the recruiting, with the big visits this week, because uh, we have nobody so far on this season. With our recruiting done, we can go ahead and do the uh, weekly check of ESPN and just see what's going on. I think there wasn't a whole lot Oklahoma, Texas playing um ranked wise let's see uh 10 stanford and 12 washington will play auburn had just lost which is nice uh south carolina plays a number 25 arkansas but nothing too absurd in the uh in the polls and then again we got to remember that reese is up in second on the heisman watch after a decent game last week but nothing mind-blowingly impressive so pretty uh pretty happy with that and uh how are we doing in terms of uh our home games are we on any sort of winning streak no that's right our last home game did not go well uh so we're on a one game losing streak at home the 71st toughest place to play in the country that is not good uh we need to turn that l into a w this week so let's just go ahead and go take care of virginia tech before we play the game, though, I am going to make one change. I think it's been a little bit crazy. Um, it's absurd the amount of tackles that have been broken against us recently. So I am going to slightly change a slider. Uh, I said back in the, the first couple of seasons that this is something, our sliders, that is, that is going to be evolving just to make sure that we find a good balance. And right now, we're just not tackling well enough. So we have to, a couple of things we could do. We could up our own user tackling. It's at 45. We could put it to 50. Um, but the CPU's one is at 50. So really, it shouldn't be that big of a discrepancy. Where it comes from, I think, is the running back ability. The CPU's is at 60. Um, ours is at 35. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tone back the CPU running ability by one click to 55 and see where that sets it. The last thing I want to do is make this too easy, but it's just a little bit unrealistic how often our tackles are broken. So we'll go ahead and load into this one. Virginia Tech at their B-plus is 91 overall, which is good, but it's not as good as teams that we have beaten this season. So that's fine. Uh, recruits are visiting. We're just going to go with the, the standard uh, home uniforms here. Um, hope that they enjoy that good looking brand how about virginia tech what do they have a bunch of away alternates but i think maybe we just stick them in the standard away and you know what i lied we're not gonna go standard away they have an orange helmet they can use yeah why not <laughs> it's it's new to the mod or from the mod so we're gonna use it so virginia tech with a solid offense um scoring the ball a lot this game moving it well through the air uh, supposedly a very bad defense, and they have not played the best team. So if they're not stopping them, that's good news for us. We also have one of the world's worst uh, pass defenses, so that could be bad news. Bunch of guys visiting. Uh, we're probably going to try hard for the 250 passing yards and 100 on the ground. Uh, I don't know if we can really do a whole lot with the defensive ones, uh, but we can always hope. Top players from this Virginia Tech team is a right guard, a running back, and a corner. The corner, though, is injured. Uh, he's out for three weeks. There's also a right tackle out and a right guard. Uh, so I guess uh, maybe the this guy's backup. But good news for us. Hopefully the running back doesn't destroy us. All righty, we're back at home. Virginia Tech loses the coin toss. So we're going to, you know, we're going to start with the ball this time around. I just feel like... I want to I want to score. I want to see how the offense can do. So the Hokies will kick this one off and get this game underway. Of course we're returning this. You kick it out towards the sideline and I'm going to bring it out every single time and it's a great return for the man who's currently second place in the Heisman race. And just so we can continue to get these all-purpose yards, we will hand it off to Reese White up the middle on first down, trying to just find the gap and we do get 3 yards on the play. And while we have like nine or ten interceptions on the season, we're still going to be passing this game. We need those yards. The play action finds nobody open. Triangle came open late, but it was I had already committed to running there. So we get five more and it's third and short. Well, I accidentally called a play that I didn't want. So 
We're going to audible into this halfback dive here and hope for the best. Third and three, the dive up the middle. Reese has it and then some. And we are across midfield. No problem on that one. Let's see what Grayson can maybe do through the air. Five wide. Looking for the pass as we find DJ Johnson, who actually broke a toe last game. But he holds on to that one for five yards. And on this second and five, we're going to hand it off again. The short gains uh, are very useful. They're working pretty well. Reese, man, taking a while to be called down. Picked up two more. It's third and short again. We're going to go ahead and continue to trust the running game. We'll try the counter on third and four. Reese has a lot of room to work with. Uh, the blocker out on the edge, that might have been Dion Fountain or somebody. He just got destroyed, but he slowed him down and allowed us to pick up the first down. We're going to look kind of deep on this one. It's technically a play action. Maybe fooling them. No, the pressure coming outside the pocket. Circle comes up and we find Aaron Bedgood and we get 12 yards just like that. The play broke down from the coverage of the Virginia Tech secondary. And on this first down, we will maybe go with a designed run to Grayson McCall on the option. He will keep it. The blocking isn't going to be there. I don't want him to take a shot. He got injured last game. I don't want it to happen this time. So he slides down. We'll just continue to this running attack. Second and five. Their defense struggling to stop our offense as we pick up another first down. This time a first and goal. See if we can pick this up through the air. First and goal. Ooh, I don't like this at all. I don't like it at all. All right, one. Reese White came open, but the pass was overthrown. And Logan Malden actually managed to come down with that. That was a, a broken play through and through. Well, let's see if the counter works again on second and goal. They are awfully stacked to that right side of the field, so it wouldn't take crazy blocking to get that, but oh my gosh, Reed's got demolished and just got back to the line of scrimmage. Third and goal. We're going to look to the end zone and throw the timing route. Pedgood oh, actually got it to his hands, but couldn't hold on through the contact. And you guys should know that we are not about to kick a field goal, not to start the game. So fourth and goal will roll outside the pocket. Grayson cuts it forward. Oh, man, a kind of a tough one. He takes some contact, but gets into the end zone, picks up the six that we need, and gets six points in the process. That was a very good drive from the offense to open up this game. Uh, maybe a struggle down there inside the red zone, but for the most part, did a good job. Special teams maybe need a little bit of work. They give up a lot of yards there. Virginia Tech has a pretty solid passing offense, so we're going to come out in the nickel to start this game. Their quarterback's running for it. He's going to break a tackle, of course, the first time. <laughs> and on this second and five, we're going to bring a blitz. Looks like it's going to be handed off. We were there with Morris to force the third down. Really getting risky here. We're going to bring the double safety blitz. See if that works. Diggs, oh, he got into the backfield, and it was enough. Diggs had his tackle broken, but he slowed down King, and we get the stop. So the slider change hasn't necessarily made the tackling any better. Uh, but maybe the running backs aren't quite as adept at breaking the attempts. Reese White trying to field this punt, just getting some positive yards to set up the offense for a chance to take a two-score lead. All righty, with the offense on the field. Ooh, I wanted to run a uh, an option on this. But the, with the way the defense is set up, we're actually going to try and bomb this deep and see what the coverage is like. Square is open. Dion Fountain. Whoa, he didn't come down with it. A terrible pass from Grayson, and it's incomplete. Well, that was a chance for a big play. It didn't work out, so we go play action. Continue to throw on second down, and Bedgood held on to that one on the play action. Grayson's now four of six through the air, but... Somehow has less than 40 yards, so we need to start getting those passes a little bit further deep. Running the ball on first down, Reese has a lot of room to work with, and I think we're going to get the 100 yards rushing no problem this game. This looks like a decent chance to run the read option. Just have to, well, I was going to say make the safety miss, but well, we handed it off, and Reese got six more in a first down. So far, this first quarter is going very well. Over the middle. Oh, we had Dion Fountain wide open on the slant, but we take the sack. And that is going to end our first quarter. Oh, just couldn't get the pass off in time. Offensive line broke down, but, you know, that's not the end of the world. Um, Decent first quarter. We have the lead. Chance to make it two scores. The defense got to stop, so if we don't score on this one, it's not the end of the world. But uh, we could take a field goal. 
Going with some kind of conservative play calling. We'll run a halfback dive on second and 16. And ooh, that did not work. Got a yard out of the play. But now they're going to be expecting the pass. And they're going to be right to expect it. But can they cover it? Logan Malden gets the first down in a few yards more with the stiff arm cheese to get us inside the red zone. Great route there. Just burning the coverage. You love to see it. Seven first downs for Coastal Carolina at this point. Zero for Virginia Tech. The Hokies need to get their offense back out on the field, but our offense is saying no to that. Second and five from inside the 15. They're playing pretty uh, pressed up on these ones. Reese White is open, catches the ball, gets the first and goal. This is working very, very well for us as we're actually going to flip this play. It's the defense to shift in a way that's favorable to us. Even shifting Malden works. Kind of brought the safety over, but the blocking looks to be pretty solid. Reese White, oh, I should have caught North. Maybe had a touchdown, still got four yards. Trying to continue to run on second and goal. The blocking, again, looking pretty solid. Reese gets tackled, but it's too late. He falls into the end zone and will extend the lead to 14 here early in the second quarter. The defense now gets a chance to come back out and really open this game up for us. If they manage to get a stop, we're going to be looking great. Oh, man. Kale Mackey just flew down the field there to give them bad field position. One thing that's going to be very important to note is that this quarterback really likes to take off on the scramble. And if we can do stuff like that and get the four-yard sack, I'm going to love it every single time. So long as I'm staying vigilant for that uh, scramble. I think we'll do okay. This is going to be a handoff. Diggs gets there for the stop, and it's third and long. All right, we just got to get one more stop here. Third down. Running back is open. Guys are open all over the place, but the quarterback has to throw off his foot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I missed the tackle with Diggs. They're going to score on that play. Oh, where's the coverage? I've got no words for that play. Throwing off, like, as he's running away off his back foot, just manages to find a guy, and then... I missed the tackle, and nobody's near. He's got a convoy, and it's back to a touchdown game. That is so, so frustrating. We had him stopped. Defense realistically did it twice in a row. It was just bad coverage. Breaking down at the end of it that uh, burns us. Reese, oh my gosh, he didn't even go down. Stepped out of bounds after a good return. So we should still be up 14 with a chance to make it 21. Instead, we'll just try to get back to two scores in the lead as uh, three minutes left in this half. We might try to burn this clock down. So long as we score on this drive, that's what matters. These guys get the ball to start the third quarter. Um, so hopefully we can get that to work. Ooh, you almost had a nice little double move, but still picked up the first down. One thing is for sure, we are moving the ball very well. Go with the quick throw to Bedgood, who holds on to it. And really, that's just to keep the clock moving and make them second guess how much we're going to run. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in the half now. Again, Reese White getting a handoff. And again, he's got us another first down, our 10th of the game so far. Reese is on fire, so we're going to continue to feed him. Because why stop the hot hand? Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's a reason he's on the Heisman watch list with games like this. Second and two, we fall down to a minute and 45 left in this first half. And I was a little late to throw it, but we do find Dion Fountain for another first down. That'll momentarily stop the clock. If you're Virginia Tech, you got to be feeling a little bit demoralized at this point in the game as we are just dominating them uh, no matter how we decide to move the this football. Curious to see what we do. Uh, Bedgood on that fade. Could he be open? Second and seven. Ooh, I don't really like it, but square over the middle. It's Dion Fountain. Maybe scored too quick. He gets into the end zone 18 yards downfield. We'll open the lead back up, but they have 57 seconds in all their timeouts to try and make something of the rest of this second quarter. So at this point, we're really going to hope that uh, we can get something done on defense once again. They think that they have a great chance to throw downfield. Hopefully they are wrong about that. We just need the defense to hold them to, uh, well, hopefully nothing. Out route is wide open. They're going to get a quick first down and get out of bounds with that. 
This play could end up being a little bit reckless, but we brought the blitz. Um, oh no. Missed a tackle, broken tackle, and he gets out of bounds. Oof. Well, we got to figure this out in quick 40 seconds. They're getting near field goal range, which we don't want them to get, but well, there it is. Finally, they have to take a timeout. So far on this drive, we do not have an answer for this defense, for this offense. We put an extra guy back in coverage, and maybe that's enough. Forces the quarterback to try to scramble, and he only got a yard. Clock is moving. And they actually had to take their second timeout to stop said clock. So that's good news for us. Second and nine. Quarterback stepping back to pass. Has a man wide open, and he gets into the end zone. Ooh, exactly what we didn't want to happen. Quincy Patterson, five of five for 150 yards and two touchdowns. And it is not impossible but it's going to be very difficult now for us to make this a two-score game heading into the locker rooms. Reese returning the ball, getting some very, very good blocking, and that's going to help a ton. He got us across midfield, 20 seconds to at least get into field goal range. We've got all of our timeouts to work with as well, and uh, we don't have to go all that far. Could that be it? Oh, this could be all everything. Bad good comes down within one play. We strike back 48 yards to the house. Hopefully 14 seconds is enough for them to score now, but we reopen up the lead to 14 points. I saw the coverage kind of break down. Safety wasn't moving quick enough and Aaron just burned them. So hopefully now this return will burn a little bit of time off the clock. We need to tackle him though. Eight seconds, we're pretty much going to go prevent here. They have eight seconds in a timeout. They're going to be throwing it deeper. They're going to be making weird plays like that. Took half their time for seven yards. Well, probably going to see a Hail Mary now to end the half. Let's hope that the defense does a decent job stopping it. Patterson all the time in the world, and it goes incomplete. So to end the half, we ooh, gave up a bad touchdown on a very quick drive, but immediately struck back. This team is looking very good offensively so far in this game. Unfortunately for us, we do have to come right back out and play some defense, which is never a strong suit for us. And, oh man, our special teams has not been good. There is a flag on the play. Hopefully, this one's coming back. Beautiful. Well, that's going to help our special teams not look quite as bad. So the Hokies now have to start this drive from the 15-yard line. First and 10, kind of expecting a run. We'll see what happens as it's an option out towards the edge. Oh, the blocking was good. Diggs missed the running back. Thankfully, got stuck behind his blocker. They only got eight yards. We tried to bring some pressure on that one. It didn't work as well as we were hoping. Second and two, this one's going to be a handoff. I don't know where the pressure was supposed to be, but Mackey's eventually able to bring him down. It is important to remember that this uh, running back had, uh, what was he, 96 overall. So he's a good running back, but ran into his lineman there and lost a yard. Second 11, I'm absolutely expecting them to go to the air. It's not a play action, though, and, well, we got there to stop him. So third down, the defense has been doing, honestly, pretty good this game. All we have to watch out for is the quarterback scrambling, I think. They're going to go to the air. Coverage over the middle wasn't there. Shelton not able to break it up, and it was just far enough to pick up the first down. Another first down, and we're going to blitz again, and yeah, nothing doing. No, he broke through. Oh, we're lucky that King stumbled down and only got five on the play. We keep blitzing, and it's really not working all that well for us. Quarterback uh, threw that one, I think, into the back of alignment, so it counts as a stop. Another third down for us. Question here is what can we do to get this stop on third and five? Could see a screen. No, it won't be. Over the middle of the field, they have guys open, and they have one deep. Oh, this is the man who's burned us before. One attempted tackle tripped up the other defender, so no chance to get the stop. Quincy Patterson, the second. I think that would just be Junior. Uh, well, he's having a good game. 8 of 10. I think that's his third passing touchdown of the game. All righty. Reese back again. They now have more total yards than us, which is pretty impressive, but uh, we've had pretty decent field uh, field position on our drive, so I guess that's been useful. Reese, however, wasn't really able to do a whole lot on that return, so starting from the 20-yard line this time around, the running game continues to work, however. 
Now, in the interest of making sure that we please all of our recruits, we did just break the 100-yard mark for rushing yards. So we're going to go play action and look to pass on this one. Dion Fountain came down with that. It was a beautiful throw, but an even better catch. Mason McCall, 11 of 13. We need 100 more yards through the air. We have a quarter and a half to do so, so I'm not too worried about it as Reese had another good run. He's breaking some tackles today, too, which is nice to see. Bedgood running this post route, post route has a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm hucking it up. Oh, no, there's another guy there. Ooh. Oh, man, that was the worst decision I've made today. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that ended up very obviously in triple coverage. We're going to just keep it on the ground on third down. Reese almost able to get it. I think that we should be able to pick this up on fourth and one. QB sneak has been pretty automatic, especially when they don't really put pressure uh, on our line. So McCall, a little bit close, but manages to convert that play. So the drive stays alive. And as much as I want to pass here, we're going to continue to keep it on the ground. Just make sure that we give ourselves decent field position as Reese is running like a Heisman candidate today. Gets another six yards there. He's averaging over five yards per carry, which is incredible. And on this play action, there's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. No, another sack. Couldn't get it off in time. It's third and long now. We haven't really had that kind of pressure in a long time. We're going to keep uh, Reese as a blocker and see if we can find some guys open. Potentially Logan Malden, third and 12. I don't want to get outside the pocket. That was a terrible throw. We do find uh, Tyson Mobley, but it's fourth and five. And I think we have to go for this now. This is a very important spot to pick this up. Gotta be feeling the pressure. Could it be it? Bedgood held on to that one through the contact. He took a shot, but he did enough for us to keep the drive alive again. This has been a long drive, but it's also been a difficult one. As again, we continue to run pretty well. Reese kind of got horse collared. Still got three yards on the play. I feel like their coverage has been pretty solid. Hoping for something here. Circles open. We found Dion Fountain, but he ran backwards. So we got a yard out of the play. And maybe he thought he had to run towards the ball to secure the, the reception, but that did not work for us. Now we get a deal with another third down. This might be the last play. It will be the last play of the third quarter. Trying to throw the timing. Oh, Malden dropped it. That wasn't even the defense. He just couldn't hang on. So here to end the fourth quarter. We are going to pass the ball. Looking for it. I don't see anything. We're just going to toss it up and nothing. Turnover on downs. Oh, man. I just didn't see anybody open. The curl routes didn't work. So as we go into the fourth quarter, Virginia Tech has the ball down a touchdown. They can make this a close game if they are successful on the ground here. So our defense started this game really strong and has struggled since. Let's hope that they can get something going. The blocking. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a lot of teal in front of him. Uh, Kayshawn King got 16 yards on first down. That is certainly not the way that we would prefer to open up this fourth quarter. That's going to be a run, though. They get stuffed. Oh, great, great job from Sidney McCray to hit him at the line of scrimmage. Really looking to get these stops. They put this one on the ground again. Shelton diving. Man, he hit his legs but couldn't slow him down, and the tackle just couldn't be secured. So another big run from Kayshawn King. Not what you like to see. Oh, we did a little bit of shift with the uh, defense changing plays and we catch out the offensive line so they'll lose five yards. We certainly will expect them to go to the air now. First and 15. No, it's going to be a, another handoff out towards the edge. The blocking continues to be incredible. Shelton got tripped up and Kayshawn King's going to score. Oh, terrible play for us. Their blocking has been phenomenal in this drive. And it's going to be tied up with five and a half minutes left in this game. Well, hopefully we can score quickly. I I don't want to burn a bunch of time and come away with nothing. I am going to return this with Reese, which could be very dangerous. Uh, oof. Well, we got a long, long ways to go on this one. It's felt like they've had clamps on our receivers this whole second half. So hopefully the running game gets it done. Oh, that's going to be great. Starting off the drive with a big run is Grayson McCall. Now a field goal could win this. So if we burn down the clock and kick a, a last second field goal, I'm not against it. Make it two games in a row. Reese having a good carry there gives us five more yards. Five wide on second and five. 
Tried to get outside the pocket. That might have been a bad idea, but we have Bedgood. Oh, couldn't get the juke off still enough for the first down and positive yards passing. Unfortunately, with how close this game is, I'm not sure if we'll reach the 250 passing yards mark. Uh, because we have to make sure that we're getting yards, which means that we have to run the ball. Second and five, we will pass the ball, however. Reese is open for a quick one and got a good 10 yards on that play. This is definitely the kind of drive where if you were Virginia Tech, you're getting a little bit worried about how well we're moving the ball at the moment. Their defense needs to figure it out. That was a great tackle. Maybe could have bounced that towards the edge, but just wanted to make sure we got positive yards. I don't feel super confident here. We're going to go play action. They've been getting good pressure on us on these plays. Grayson heaved one up. Oh my gosh, we avoided the sack and just launched it downfield and Tyson Mobley came down with it for a first down. I didn't even know what button I pressed. I think I hit all four of the buttons that we could have passed to and it just happened to be caught. So I got bailed out there, but I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, first down, running the ball is Reese and getting some more positive yards as the clock continues to burn down in this game. Oh man, this is tough. Let's bring Logan Malden in motion here. Get a little bit of an extra block out towards the edge with this read. And on the read, Reese is going to get the carry and he's going to get tripped up for a loss of a yard. This is a massive third down Seeing what we can do through the air. Never mind, we can get outside the pocket. Plenty of room to run. We pick up a block and Grayson gets out of bounds. Just shy of the 10-yard line. Every once in a while, they don't respect Grayson's running ability and we make them pay. And I am definitely happy with that. Clock's really starting to burn down. We're in field goal range. We might let it burn. We're under a minute and 45. They are going to have to start taking their timeouts unless they think that they can ice our kicker. But Frederick's been good so far this season. Oh, great cut from Reese. Third and three. This is very much one that we could pick up. I don't necessarily expect to get it, but no. Look at how clear the box is. Third and three. This should be a touchdown up the middle for Reese White, and it is. Five yards. Oh, man. He gets his eighth carry of the drive, and we end it with a touchdown there. So the defense has struggled. In this second half, they came out of the gate swinging, but have since slowed down. They have just under a minute and three timeouts that they have to hold on for as Virginia Tech will look to send this to overtime. All righty, five wide. We know what they're going to be doing. We just have to make sure this quarterback doesn't run on us. And I'll take plays like that, forcing them to take their first timeout. Anytime they don't pick up a first down, it's good news for us. Second and inches, they'll step back to pass again, and quarterback's going to scramble. He broke one sack. Oh my gosh, the blocking was incredible, so he picked up the first down. They will be forced to take their second time out, though. They're definitely not in the spot that they want to be in, as they did get a first down, but they want more, I'm sure. Quarterback scrambling again. The spy of steel. Is it? Oh, it, I thought it wasn't going to be enough. The clock's burning, but they got eight yards. I would love to get a, a sack, but they spiked the ball, stopping the clock. 28 seconds and one timeout left for Virginia Tech. This game getting all too close is on third and two. Of course, they're going to step back to pass, and I'm going to leave it open over the middle, but he had to throw that one away, so it's fourth and two, 24 seconds. The game is on the line on this play. A stop from the defense would be enough. Question is, will that happen? They're going to run the option. We hit the quarterback in the backfield. He pitched it out, though, and found his man for a first down. And he got out of bounds as well. 19 seconds now. What an incredibly risky play call there, but it works out. They cross midfield. And first down, I'm expecting them to just continue to pass. They're really starting to run out of time. Quarterback gets, well, he broke another sack, but finally gets brought down. 12, 11, the clock is burning. What are they going to be able to do? Will they even be able to get a playoff? Five, four, three, two. They're going to have to spike the ball with two seconds left on the clock. And we're going to go full on pre-event on this. We know the Hail Mary's coming. The question is, can we stop it? We're going to bring Finch back. Only pressuring with two. We actually did get pressure there. The ball falls to the turf incomplete. And we will hold on to beat three. And now two, Virginia Tech. We get back above 500 a winning season so far, four and three. What a tough game. Reese White played his heart out. Couple of touchdowns, a ton of all-purpose yards. 
And hopefully that's enough to get us a couple of recruits as well. Grayson McCall, 17 to 22 for 211 through the air. Had some nice pass plays. Avoided the turnovers somehow, but man, big, big game with a bunch of recruits visiting. Hopefully that looks good for our next year's class. Ooh, man, if we didn't give up that play, though, it would have been a whole, whole different story. My, oh my, what a game. Ooh, how about that for an upset? Number four, Florida loses to LSU, who had a pretty big comeback. Uh, Florida was up 31 to three at halftime. That's pretty impressive. How about our game though? The one that really matters. We outrushed them. They did outpass us, but only by a little bit. Killed them on time of possession, which seems to be uh, becoming a theme for us. Didn't have any turnovers. So it seems like, again, when we don't have turnovers, we uh, at least stay in the game till the end of it if not win it, but I'm just, uh, I'm happy with the way that one worked. Defense did good early in the game and did enough at the end. Grayson Gase, again, Grayson goes 17 to 22 for 211, carried it eight times for 28 yards, even with the couple of big sacks and had three touchdowns. And Jordan Morris, our corner, five tackles, a tackle for loss and a sack. Pretty impressive on the day. I am very happy to get that win. Back to back for us and we finally get another one at home. Uh, as uh, it's been a while since we've won in Con Conway, it feels like. We'll go ahead and advance this week. We played Virginia Tech this week. We get Virginia on the road for week eight. And there it is. The recruiting class is starting with a bang. Rashad Howard, an 80 overall left tackle, commits to the team. We get a 79 and a 76 overall middle linebacker pairing in Will Phillips and Mark Washington. And it continues there with Eric Perkins, the 70 overall wide receiver. So four commits. Nobody locks us out or commits elsewhere. And we had good visits uh, with other guys. Greg Jones, maybe the chance for that 81 overall wide receiver. So we move to that four and three mark. Virginia, only one and four on the season. They're a B, so they're going to be in the 80s on their overall, which is great news for us. But what happened around the country and maybe... Could we be receiving votes? I kind of doubt it, but we know at least number four, Florida loss. Number one, Oklahoma beat previous number nine, Texas. So they win the Red River shootout or rivalry, whatever you prefer to call it. Iowa State. Uh-oh, they lost to TCU. Number three team takes their first loss, as did the number four team. So two top five teams losing. Um, Texas took a loss. Washington took their second to a now number seven, Stanford. And number five, USC took their first loss. So three, four, and five all lost for the first time. They lost to an unranked Colorado. And there's just so much more. Uh, 15, Nebraska lost to Penn State. Auburn lost again, this time uh, against Ole Miss. With all that, we're still not receiving votes. South Carolina, Purdue, UCLA, and Clemson all dropped out. But we're just not quite there yet. Maybe a couple more wins. We are still four and three and three losses is... Not going to help with that. How about our Heisman watch? Reese had a good game. It's enough to keep him in that second spot, which is fine for me. I don't necessarily expect Reese to continue the production he's been getting so far this season. You know, enough to win the Heisman, but I would just want him to be a finalist. I want him to get the trip to New York. Uh, his average yards per game has gone up. His yards per carry is still solid. It's at 685 on the season so far. 13 touchdowns, and uh, he didn't fumble last game, so that's good. And thankfully, we did win again there at Brook Stadium. Uh, we do move up a couple of ranks in the toughest places to play, but that doesn't matter. The one that matters is our home winning streak now sits at one, and we can continue to start to build that up. We want double digits, but that's going to have to wait. Not just because we're playing on the road here in week eight, but also because it's the end of the episode. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I want to know what you guys think about the slider change. It didn't feel like it was a massive difference, but maybe we were able to slow down the running back a little bit more. Maybe instead of breaking three tackles uh, per carry, it was only two. So I think for now, we're going to keep that and just continue moving forward with that change. But again, let me know how you feel. And if you guys enjoyed the content and you're not already subscribed, please feel free to do that as well. And while you're down there, please head to the description. We've got links for my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as a link to my Twitter and our community Discord. And of course, there's always going to be a link to find the College Football Revamped mod if you're trying to play it yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later.
Adios.